Hello everyone, today I'm going to tell you a little bit about Financial Peace University as far as being a coordinator. We are in our second class, our second time to lead, so I thought I'd share some tips with you guys. Maybe you're thinking about doing it one day in the future or you're going to be doing it soon or maybe you're signed up to do it now and you're freaking out about it kind of like I did for the first time and I remember going to YouTube because I had never taken the class at all. The first time I took it, we coordinated it. Uh, so I really had no idea what to expect and I was trying to find things on YouTube So since this is our second time I thought I'd give you a few tips and stuff and let you know how we do our classes Now the first time that we led the class it was the first time that our church had it So we had about 60 people sign up for the class Because everyone from our church was just excited about it. So it was mostly members from the church, but also a few outsiders this time we have not had nearly as many people sign up we actually considered pushing the start date back um, a couple weeks before it started because like only eight people had signed up but we decided not to and at the last minute more people signed up so we were glad that we didn't but one thing to know one thing to keep in mind is that people will drop out after the first or second class maybe not come back at all uh, we've had a couple couple people do that so like yesterday we had week seven and there was only six people there besides us coordinators so it's definitely shrunk down a bit. Right now, there are six of us coordinating it, three couples. They've both been working the plan for a couple years, so they're very passionate about this stuff just like we are, and they live it. So that's really important, is you have to be passionate about it. Okay, Jared is, if you guys don't know, Jared's a complete extrovert, and I'm a complete introvert. So we definitely play our different roles in the class. Uh, Jared's the one that usually does all the talking and um, I will have to tell him what we're supposed to do in the lesson and when we, when we break up into our small groups, um, I'll have to tell him what, ahead of time what we're supposed to be doing, but then he's the one that takes the lead because he doesn't mind talking, whereas I do. And um, like at the beginning of the class, he will get up in front of everybody and he'll um, just welcome everyone back and he'll say a prayer and he'll do whatever we're supposed to do. And then we start the video and then you break up into your small groups and like I said Jared usually takes the lead but I kind of do all the behind the scenes stuff I will send out the weekly emails you send out weekly emails just to encourage everyone and to remind them to do their homework and to encourage them to keep coming to class and uh, just other little fun facts or whatever you want to share so I take care of that and I'm also the one that handles um, bringing in the uh, treats or whatever you want to call it each week because I kind of like doing that stuff which I'll share at the end of the video some ideas what we do and other ideas that I've found that you can do for each week the other leaders will take care of things like uh, opening up the church and they get the coffee ready and they turn the lights on and all that stuff so it's really helpful when there's a lot of people helping out so like I said what you do in FPU if you've never taken it you get there you have your start time so someone goes up and they welcome everyone back and the book tells you exactly what to say and what to do we don't always follow what the book says sometimes at the beginning it's one big group and it might ask you it might tell you to ask a question and usually nobody answers so it's well sometimes people do but it can be really awkward and so usually we just make it really quick we go up there and welcome everyone back and it, it also tells you to do check people's budgets at the very beginning of class but we never do that until we break up into small groups because it will just take too, up too much time um, and then we start the video the videos are usually about an hour long as soon as the video is over we will break up into our small groups the first time we had it where there was like 60 people we had I think we had three small groups and this time we started out with two small groups but now we've just all combined into one because not that many, very many people are coming so then the book will tell you 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 hand out some numbers numbered cards and we'll, they'll take whoever has the number will ask a question and then we'll have a group discussion it's questions about what the video you just watched and um, and then sometimes there's extra case studies that you break up into even smaller groups and you just do some case studies together it's really easy but the small groups can be really awkward especially me an awkward person I'm, I feel really uncomfortable when you ask questions uh, they say <clears throat> some of the tips that 
as a leader, you'll get emails and stuff from the Dave Ramsey team, the FPU team. And one thing they always say is that silence is a good thing and that you're supposed to let the other people talk and you're not supposed to talk the whole time. So it's really awkward when you first ask a question and nobody talks. And so then usually we'll end up having to speak up and start talking just to get other people to talk. And there's people throughout the whole nine weeks that won't say anything. And then there's people that will do all the talking, you know, the chatty Cathy's, which is, is fine. But that's one thing I stressed out about a lot at first was I didn't want us to talk too much. I didn't want us to talk too much about ourselves or anything like that. But now that we've combined into one group, we've noticed that the other coordinators do do a lot of talking. And sometimes it can be a little too much, but then again, when the rest of the group isn't talking, you kind of just have to. And so I feel like I shouldn't have stressed so much about that at first. If I, if I felt like I wanted to say something, then I should have spoke up and said it because we are supposed to be an example for them. So maybe I should have talked a little bit more, but it's hard to tell. Um, but like I said, it can be really awkward, but that's what the people, the FPU people say that that's normal. So I don't know. And my advice to you, if you are going to take this class, is not as a coordinator, but just taking the class, like don't be scared to talk and share your stories, share your successes, your experiences as you're going through the class, especially if you're new to budgeting. And don't be afraid to ask questions either because people want to hear that we're all going through the same thing. So that will be helpful if you speak up. Sometimes if um, if it's if nobody said anything for a while, and like you know you, we usually know people personally in the class, so Jared will call them out and say ask him their opinion or ask them to say something, and it's never been a problem. They'll speak up and give their input, and some, so sometimes that's what it takes, I think. But I think that's pretty much it as far as being in the actual class. Some things that you have to do after the class is you have to go online and you have to check the attendance. Like I said, I send out weekly emails along with bringing the treats to class each week. Uh, we also give out raffle tickets each week. We give a raffle ticket for attendance. We give a raffle ticket if they did their homework. We give a ticket for every time they save or pay off $500 towards debt, then we'll give them a raffle ticket. They just have to let us know and then if they attend all nine weeks, they get a raffle ticket. And um, for the last qu class, we'll do a drawing and we give out prizes like some Dave Ramsey books or Starbucks gift cards. Last year, I was in a sewing group and so was the other girl. So we made some, some wallets, like cash envelope wallets, and those were a big hit. And so I think one of the other girls is making one this year. This year, since we have a small class, we're doing we're gonna do two $10 Starbucks gift cards, uh, retire inspired, the legacy journey, and she's making a wallet. So we're just gonna have five gifts. And I guess that's pretty much it. Now I'll, I'll show you and I'll insert some pictures on, as I'm going along of some of the um, little things that we've given out each class. With our first time leading, we did not give something out each class because there was too many people and it would have been too expensive. But this time, um, I've just done candy each class. Oh, and for the fourth one, or the dump and debt one, we made a dump cake. So we had it in a different area of the church. So when one of the couples walked in, they were kind of looking around for the candy and asking where it was. So I kind of knew after that, like, oh, I better bring something each time or I'm gonna let them down. Let them down, which you don't have to. And I haven't spent more than $10 each week this time on the candy. So even with nine weeks, yeah, it can add up to almost $90. So you don't have to do that. That's totally your choice, but I enjoy doing stuff like that. So that's why I do it. So week one was, week one was the super saving lesson. The first time we led the class, we got little socks at the dollar store and we put a hundred grand candy bar in them. We put a little note on it, pinned it on there that said sock away some dough, you know, save some money. This time what we did is I got some little mini payday candy bars and I got some little paper umbrellas. So I just tied two payday candy bars together with the umbrella in between it. And it was supposed to imply a uh, save for a rainy day or you will always be living payday to payday. 
Where I got all my ideas was when you're a coordinator, you have access to all kinds of stuff on the FPU Central website. And if you go find the discussion boards, that's where I got all my ideas, which it takes a while to scroll, th scroll through and read everything. I also joined last week a page on Facebook that, ha that is for FPU coordinators. And so if I can figure out what the name of that is, I'll put it below. <clears throat> they have to accept you and let you join. Okay, for week two, that was relating with money, nerds and free spirits. The first time we did FPU, we gave out nerds and Laffy Taffy, which I'm not a big fan of Laffy Taffy. So this time I gave out nerds and Snickers. Everybody loves Snickers. Duh. Week three was cash flow planning. Pretty much Dave teaches you how to budget. What we did was this year, I don't know if we did anything last year, last time. We did lifesavers, gummy lifesavers. Gummies are my favorite and everybody seemed to love them. Uh, and you can just tell them, remember that the budget is zero based. Give every dollar a home. Give every dollar that comes in a home or it's just gonna roll away. You could also do zero candy bars. I tried to find those, but I couldn't find zero candy bars in, because of a zero based budget. Week four is the dumping debt lesson. So one of the other leaders made a dump cake. She did that last year and this year, and everybody loved the dump cake. Week five is buyer beware, talking about marketing and stuff like that. So we did some take five candy bars to remind them to think about their purchases. Week six was the role of insurance. It teaches you all about all kinds of insurances. One idea is you can take a small box of matches and put your fire on it to remind you to fire your insurance agent if you need to. But I like doing something food related. So what we did was dum dum suckers, which I don't care for dum dum suckers, but I couldn't think of anything else. Week seven is retirement and college planning. You could either bring a happy retirement cake or what we did was we, I, what was it? One of the other weeks I had bought some cupcake liners from Target, some really cute ones and they were only like a dollar. So I ended up using those for two different classes and I brought some, um, it's Easter, almost Easter right now. So the Easter candy's out. So they had some Easter egg looking M&M candies so I got those and some jelly beans. Pretty much tell them, don't put all their eggs in one basket and to diversify their investments. Let's see, week eight is real estate and mortgages. Now we have not gotten to this week, so I'm not 100% sure what we're gonna do. The only idea that I've liked, that I've seen is chips and dip for, to imply chipping away at the mortgage and then the last week, week nine, is the Great Misunderstanding, which is when we will do our big drawing. So I don't know if I'll bring any treats. Some other options is you can do a potluck. Everybody can bring food. You know, it's just a way to get, a, get to all eat together, your last time together. And, uh, and you also, you're going to be handing out certificates at the last class. Another thing to remember that you should do is to take a class picture with everyone. That's a good idea to have. You can hang it up in your church or whatever, and you can hold up a sign that says the total amount of debt that was paid off by the class. I think another idea for the dumping debt lesson, lesson four, would be to bring beans and rice, because when you're dumping debt, you kind of have to live on beans and rice, you know? Another idea for the last class is you can make a big cake that looks like a credit card, so then you are cutting up the credit card. And there's just all kinds of things you can do as a coordinator to make it fun. You can do weekly drawings instead of the drawings at the end um, and give out little gifts each week. But overall, I think that the best thing that we can do as coordinators is just try to make it fun and let people know that they're not in this alone and that we care. And uh, because it can be, like I said, awkward. With It's about money, so people and people don't know each other, so it can be uncomfortable. So just make them feel comfortable, you know, be funny, don't be too serious, which I'm saying this to myself because I need to be more outspoken and make the class more fun. So uh, yeah, I think that's probably the best thing that you can do. So yeah, but that's all that we did. 
Let us know below if you have taken this FPU class before and what you did and did not like about the class or about the coordinators, what they could have done to make it better, and just any helpful tips that the other viewers can see in the comments below. Just let us know what you think about it. And thank you guys for watching this video. Sorry it ended up being long. I hope it was helpful. And let me know if you have any other questions about FP. But I guess that's all for this video. And I'll talk to y'all later.